you drive it, I just have my insurance. So whatever questions you have, let me know. I cannot answer like legal questions. So if you have been in an accident and have a question and you need to talk to an attorney, we can get you like the Utah Bar Association's number so they can help you that way. And I also can't refer you to a specific insurance company. But I can tell you about general concepts and principles. So when we talk about insurance, what do we mean? When I'm saying we need to buy insurance, do you understand that at all? What comes to mind? Insurance means insurance for a car. Okay, so insurance for a car. Yeah. Auto insurance, perfect example. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. So insurance, we're going to talk about four different types of insurance tonight. But essentially it's a payment if you're ever injured or in the event of a loss. So in your example of a car or auto insurance, if you left the library tonight and you pulled out and somebody hit you, hopefully you have auto insurance to cover the damage on the car. Yeah. We're going to talk about health insurance, life insurance, and then homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance as well. So it's all designed specifically to help you in the event of a loss. So some of the most important words related to any type of insurance is a premium, and your premium is the monthly cost. So how much do you pay each month for your coverage? Auto insurance could be $40, it could be $125. If you're a really bad driver and get in lots of accidents, it could be $225. The deductible, this is how much you are required to pay before your insurance company will come in and cover you. Do you have a car right now? Yes. Okay. Do you know what your deductible is? No. Okay. For just the purposes of an example, if you're wanting to keep the monthly cost, so your premium, if you're wanting to keep that lower, you are going to increase your deductible. Because you're hoping that you're a good driver and you never have to use your insurance, so your insurance company says, okay, to pay a lower premium or a lower monthly cost, you'll just be responsible for more if you crash. Deductibles can be anywhere from $500 to $2,000. Is your car worth more than $2,000? Do you know where you think it is? Yeah. It's about worth about $2,000. Okay, good example. I'm going to come back to that. My car may be worth $4,000. I'm not sure. On my vehicle, because I don't have $4,000, if I got in a car accident, I don't have $4,000. So my deductible on my car is at F $750. That means that I pay a little bit more each month, but they're going to come in and cover me as long as I pay $750. And then your claim is what you have to use or file if you're ever in an accident. Or if you have health insurance and you go to the hospital, the insurance um, company will receive a bill or an explanation of benefits from the hospital, and that's how they'll start to know there was a bill and they'll process your claim. So if you ever need to use your insurance, you're going to file a claim, and that's how that process is, or that's how the process works that way. Um, Insurance coverage, these are just some questions you can ask yourself. If something happened to you, or your car, or your apartment, would you have enough money to cover it right now? If the answer is no, then you probably need some kind of insurance. Um, do you have any children? Yes. Do you, are you the person that makes the most money in your household? So if you passed away, how would your children survive? Crazy question, huh? Yeah. So that's something to think, and this is a huge question that comes along for parents. Before, when you didn't have any children, you are just living life, everything was great, but maybe your wife was relying on you, and when you weren't married, maybe it was just you. But now you have children, you're going to want to consider, how are they going to be taken care of if I'm gone? So we'll touch on all of those questions. I want to start off talking a little bit about homeowners and renters and children. Do you currently own your own home? Or do you pay rent? You pay rent? Okay. So if you had a home, you would want to get homeowners insurance. 
insurance. And there's three different types of coverage that you can get or insurance to protect your asset. But why do we need this? Our homeowner's insurance is going to cover our home and our belongings in our home if there's a fire, if there's a flood, if somebody like breaks in and takes all of your things, that's where you will use the homeowner's insurance. With that as well, um, there is renter's insurance. Kind of the same idea. Renter's insurance is a lot cheaper or a lot less expensive than homeowner's insurance. So where you rent and you have all of your belongings in your apartment, do you have a renter's insurance policy? Yes. Okay, excellent. Now, the importance of the renter's insurance policy is because if there was a fire in the apartment building, like somebody else started it but spread into your apartment, your renter's insurance policy is going to protect your belongings. If you did not have renter's insurance and your apartment caught on fire or burned down, you would not receive any money for any of your belongings. So that's why renter's insurance is very important. And if you know of anybody who rents but doesn't have renter's insurance, you might want to talk to them or just suggest, hey, you can get renter's insurance for $8 a month or $10 a month. It's not that much money to protect your belongings. With this as well, if somebody were injured in your apartment, like let's say I went over to your house and we were having a cooking party. We were teaching you how to make some food and I cut my finger. I was injured on your property. Maybe I don't have health insurance, so I don't want to go to the hospital because I have no way to pay for my finger to get some back on or fixed. Your renter's insurance could possibly cover me through the liability coverage because I was hurt at your home. Even though you didn't hurt me, your renter's insurance and your homeowner's insurance has the liability coverage there. So if anyone's ever injured at your home and somebody says, hey, we went to the hospital, they asked for your renter's insurance policy. It's just the number of your policy that you get from your company, and you can provide that to them, and the hospital will bill your insurance. Um, with renter's insurance, if you had to be moved out of your home, or if you were displaced because of a fire, or maybe a flood or something like that, a lot of times your renter's insurance will cover the cost to stay in a hotel or in another home until you can get back into your apartment. So those are all things to consider that way. Um, before you purchase your homeowner's or renter's insurance policy, did you research or did you check different prices? So I have basically for the uh, home insurance. Uh -huh. So I have the home insurance. It's, it's covered to pay that my car again. So, so you have your car insurance yes. and your home insurance yeah. together? Yes. Excellent. So that's the same way that they are talking about. Yeah, so this is a very good question. Thank you for bringing this up. So when you have your car insurance and your homeowner's insurance or your renter's insurance together, yeah. it's called a bundle, and that means they're giving you a better deal, or it's cheaper, because you're using two products from the same company. So they think this man is very responsible. We know he has insurance on his home and his car, so they'll give you a better deal. So even though it's with the same company, you still have two policies or two different kinds of insurance, and it will protect both your car and your home. So that's a good question. Good, good question. Um, make sure when you're deciding how much insurance do I need, with your renter's insurance, do you have enough coverage to, to protect all of the stuff that's in your home. Yes. You, you're certain that you do. Perfect. Sometimes it's sad because somebody might buy a renter's insurance policy and they'll only have $10,000 in coverage, but the things in their home are worth $20,000. So always just make sure that you have whatever your coverage or your protection amount is, it's enough to cover you. And it sounds like that it is. Um, with the levels of your coverage, you can get something that's actual cash value. So you would say, as an example, in my home I might have things that are worth $15,000. And so with that I want to make sure that I have on my policy 
at least $15,000 and they were going to give me cash to replace all my, all my things if there was a fire or a flood or some other kind of emergency. Sometimes, do the price of goods go up or down? Usually they go up. So another type of insurance you could get is the replacement cost coverage. So let's say this jacket you had on, do you remember how much it cost? Let's say maybe, it seems pretty nice, $40. Does that sound good? Yeah. So maybe, how, do you know how long you've had your jacket for? Uh, maybe two years. It's two years. Yeah. So you buy your jacket two years ago for $40. Mm -hmm. What if I take your jacket, I steal it from you, if you were to go buy that same jacket today, it's probably going to cost more than $40. might be $60. It might be $75. If that were the case, you want to make sure on your replacement cost that it was actually going to do the full value of your jacket. Because if your insurance only gave you $40, you might not be able to buy the same kind of jacket or the same quality of jacket. So that's something to consider that way. You might think, well, how do I know what the replacement cost is? There's this packet of information that we um, have back there, and I'll give you this one, and it looks like you might have it. So this is, they call this a home inventory. So what this is, is you can go into your home and you'll write down all of the items or all the things you have. So it says an item in here, they've written some of the stuff down, like a couch or a sofa. And if you have a couch in your house, you can say, okay, my couch is from RC Bill. And the model or the serial number is this, so you write down like the code or the number for your item the day that you purchased it, so maybe you bought your couch three years ago, so you would say in 2013, and then you would write your purchase price there. So you say, okay, in 2013, I paid $300 for my couch. For your jacket, you could write on there a coat, and I bought it two years ago for $40. And what you want to do is you're going to put the value of all the items in your home, so it's divided by room. So there's the living room, there's kitchen, there's an office, and then there's um, three or four bedrooms. So you could go through for every room in your house and write everything on there. You want to keep this, you want to make a copy of this, and then you want to keep it, one maybe in your house, but you want to keep another with a family member or someone else who doesn't live with you. In case you did have an emergency in your home, you could take this form and show it to your insurance company and say, these are all my things that were lost. And that's how they know how much cash value they need to pay out or if it's replacement value. Do you have any questions on that? Yeah. Okay. Um, when you're buying a policy, so for your auto insurance and your renter's insurance, you have the policies with the same company. You'll want to make sure if you ever decide to change who you buy your insurance or you want to use a different company, um, make sure that you check prices. Ask friends and family who they like to do business with. I have some insurance companies that I love. I have other insurance companies I'll never use because I don't like having treated people that I know. So make sure that when you are shopping through different policies that you ask around and make sure that your insurance agent is a licensed, a legitimate agent. So if I came to you and said, hey, do you want to buy insurance? I'm not an insurance salesperson. So you might say, are you licensed? Can you really sell me this? And if I tell you no, then you walk the other way. So make sure you only buy insurance from the company itself or from a licensed person. Um, these are some ways that you can save on insurance. You told me you have auto insurance and your renter's insurance together, yeah. so that's a bundle. So that's one of the best ways to save on insurance. Um, we always encourage people to check at least three places. So check with three different companies if you ever decide you want to see if there's a better price or a better deal out there for you. Um, you can also, when you do compare, make sure that you are comparing the same coverage amounts. So maybe um, you go to the, the insurance company where Liesl works and then you come to the insurance company where I work and maybe Liesl said, we can give you an insurance policy for $15 a month and it's going to cover $50,000 or I might tell you, come to me, I will give you the insurance policy for $10 a month, but I can only cover $15,000 worth of things. So you're thinking in your head, 
ten dollars is a better deal than this lady, this option over here at fifteen dollars. But for five extra dollars a month, the coverage is much better. So check around and make sure you're you're um, looking at the same amounts or the same value amounts that way. In your home, do you have a smoke detector? Yes. A fire detector? If your insurance, if you're looking at the price and you're wondering, I wonder if I can get a better deal, you can call your insurance company. A lot of times they'll give you discounts if you have fire detectors or carbon monoxide monitors. And then also if you have deadbolts or if like you have really good locks on the doors, a lot of times they'll give you better deals on your insurance as well that way. So those are the things if you're wondering, how can I save more on my insurance? Call and ask them those three things. So safety. Um, and the security of your home and what give you better deals that way. Um, when you are purchasing insurance, a lot of times we'll make mistakes. Because we want to save money so we do things cheaply and it ends up hurting us. So one of the worst things that people do is when you end up buying your own home, instead of insuring the replacement cost of the home, they do something called real estate value. What that means is, well, let's say you purchased a home and next year, and the value of your home when you bought it was $185,000, which is a pretty good sized home for your family. If you are going to just put the real estate value on that home, you say, okay, it's $185,000. What happens when the economy goes down and the value of your home goes down? Maybe you bought your home for $185,000, but now it's only worth $150,000. If you were only insuring for the value of your home and your home was destroyed in an earthquake or a flood or a fire, the insurance company would only pay you $150,000. But to rebuild your home might cost $200,000. So when you end up buying your own home, make sure that you're insuring the true value of the property and all of your belongings. It's a big mistake that a lot of people make. So, I have a question. If the economy go down and the housing that it go down, it could be they go down or they go down. So, let me make sure I'm understanding the question. So, if the economy goes down and the value of your home goes down, you want to make sure that you have actually insure your home or put coverage on your home for the true cost of rebuilding. Because if you haven't, and if you only insure it for the real estate value, if the value of your home goes down, then they won't give you as much money if your home is destroyed. If the economy goes up and you've insured it for the real estate value, likewise they're going to pay you more money. But it's a chance or a risk you take if you're only insuring for the real estate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing that people do to save money is they'll take away flood insurance and earthquake insurance. In Utah, because we're close to the mountains and then it's a valley, we're, and we're on a fault line where the earth is always moving, we're supposed to have a huge earthquake here. But a lot of times people say, oh, we haven't had an earthquake for hundreds of years, so they don't need sure for earthquake. But when an earthquake does come and this happens to their home, they're not going to be protected. So that's another thing to do. So the assurance that you pay you if you get a earthquake at that house? If you have earthquake coverage or if you have earthquake insurance, they will cover you. If you do not have earthquake insurance, then they will not cover you. Well, that's different. It is an add-on or it's part of your policy, but sometimes it's not there. So with your policy, you might want to call them and say, hey, do I have earthquake insurance? Because I live in Utah and we are supposed to have an earthquake, and they can tell you if you do or not. So it's part of your insurance policy, but sometimes it won't be on there. They don't put it on if you don't ask. Or they might have said, hey, do you want to save money on your policy? And you said, sure. And they'll say, okay, we're going to take off your earthquake insurance. So that's something to check on just to make sure that you have protection that way. Just ask them, do I have earthquake insurance? And if they say yes, then you're good. If they say no, then you can decide, do I want this or do I not? But that's something you commonly take off. 
Um, with life insurance, you mentioned you have children, so this part is a little bit important. <coughs> life insurance is there to protect your family and cover your lost wages if you pass away. And there's two types of insurance policies when it comes to insuring your life. You work and you bring in money for your family, right? Does your wife work outside the home or is she, is she able to stay at home? She's working too. So where both of you are working and you're both relying on your incomes to support your family and pay for your bills, you probably both want to have life insurance. If something happened to your wife, would you be able to pay everything on your own? Or would it be very hard? So I have to pay So if you have to pay, life insurance for the world. That's good? Yes. They have, so you have life insurance offered through your work. Yes. That is great. Because if you have life insurance through your work, usually the cost or the price of it is much lower. So if you don't have life insurance through your work and you decide that you need it, you might call an insurance agent and say, hey, can I add life insurance onto my policies with my car insurance and my home insurance? And they'll say, sure. And they'll ask you a few questions and they'll give you a price. But life insurance through your work, because your company will usually help pay for part of it, it's a lot cheaper or a lot better deal. So that's very good if you have that through your work. You'll want to make sure, if they give you choices, make sure you choose an amount that will be what your family will need to survive without you. And it's a very, very personal decision. So talk to your wife about it and say, okay, if I were to pass away, how much money would you need to cover these bills? And how much or how many years would you need help for? So that is a good question to ask them. There's two types, so you have life insurance through your work. There's two different types of life insurance that you'll hear someone talk about. So there's term insurance, which is just for a specific period of time. It might be five years, it might be 20 years, it might be 25 years. So if you buy a term life policy, you know that it's not probably going, if you live to be 80, it's probably not going to cover you because it will end before then. People will sometimes just buy these short-term policies until their children are out of the home or until nobody is um, relying on their income. With these term policies, when you're younger, they're a lot cheaper because they're expecting that you're going to live to be an older man and that you're probably not going to need this coverage. Um, with whole life, this insurance will cover you for the entire length of your life. So if you're paying for whole life insurance, it's going to be the same cost during your whole life. How can they do that? It's because right now when we're younger, they're going to charge us just a little bit more money. But as we age, we're still paying that same amount because the price balances itself. And with this one, you know, okay, I bought this policy. It's for the whole length of my life. So if I pass away when I'm 50, or if I pass away when I'm 85, I'm still going to have this coverage. Questions on this? No questions? No questions? Okay. <laughs> Now we're going to get to auto insurance. You told me that you have auto insurance, so if you have questions about yours, let me know. But why do we need auto insurance? Because what? What is the house? Uh, so, yeah, to protect your house or to protect your car. Yes. Auto insurance is actually required in the state of Utah as law if you're driving on the road. So if you drive a car but you don't have insurance, you're breaking the law. And if you get caught doing that, you're going to receive a fine, your car could be taken away, and if you do it long enough, you could end up being charged or sent to jail or to court. If you have a loan on your vehicle, you're also required to have more auto insurance and more coverage because the bank or the credit union wants to make sure that if you crash and wreck their car, there's money there to pay. That's why insurance is so important. 
I'm going to talk a little bit about these coverages on three different slides, but here's just a general overview. So liability insurance, this is the, the most common one, and this is the one that is required by law in the state of Utah. Liability insurance, if you cause the accident, will protect or help the person you crashed into. It's very important to remember that this does not cover your car. So if you only have liability insurance on your car, if you crash it, then you have to pay for all the damages. It will cover the other person that you ran into. If you think, that's not a good idea, because I need my car and I don't have a lot of money to fix it, then you're going to want to get collision coverage. So you can have all of these different coverages together. So liability required by law, collision coverage is going to protect your car if you crash into somebody. And then comprehensive coverage, that's a huge word, and what that means is that's going to cover other damages. It's going to cover rainstorms, it's going to cover fire, it's going to cover theft. So if you live in a dangerous part of a city or a town and lots of people's cars get broken into, you might want to add comprehensive coverage so your car and the things inside of it are protected or covered that way. Some other coverages that you can add on to these three policies are towing or roadside assistance. So if your car breaks down and you have tow coverage on there, they could come and take your car to a mechanic if you are in a wreck, do you have another car that you could drive while your first car got fixed? Or would you just have to walk or take a bus or train? With that, it's something to consider. Because if you don't have access to another vehicle or another car, you might want to pay for rental car coverage. In case you're in an accident while your car is being repaired, they'll pay for a rental car, so you have a spare car to drive until yours is fixed. So those are some different things to consider that way. So which one is better for a car? Which one is better for a car? Yeah. Let's take a look. I'm going to ask you a bunch of other questions, and then you'll get to your answer. Um, so liability is the one that's required in the state of Utah. So this is the minimum coverage you can have, and this will be the cheapest coverage you can have. For injuries to another person, it has to be, it has to pay for a minimum of $25,000. If there's an accident, so that's per person, per accident it will be $65,000 of coverage, and then for property it has to cover $15,000. So if you crash into a house or a fence or a tree or something like that. And this coverage is only going to cover somebody that for health insurance, you might have health insurance available for your work, and I'll talk to you about that in just a second. If you don't have health insurance, then this coverage is really important. It's called PIP coverage, or personal injury protection, and it would only cover up to $3,000 of medical bills, which for an auto accident, if you go to the hospital, your emergency room visit is probably going to be a lot more than that, but at least you would have this minimum coverage just to help. Keep remembering your question, I'm going to come back to it. I have not forgotten or ignored you. What happens if somebody, what if I don't have car insurance? I broke the law, I was selfish, and I drove without car insurance, and I crashed into you tonight. Because it was raining so hard, I couldn't see, I was really stressed out about everything that was going on in my life. If I don't have auto insurance, you are going to want, or you're going to hope, that you had uninsured, protection on one of your plans. And what that does for you is I crash into your car, I don't have car insurance, but if you're paying for uninsured or underinsured coverage, then your auto insurance is going to come in and fix your car, even though I was not responsible. Collision and comprehensive coverage is if there's a hailstorm, or if this storm turns into snow, and we can't drive our cars, and a snowplow comes in and smashes you and your car's damaged because of the snow, then this is going to cover you that way. To answer your question, there's a lot of different things you need to consider. And I'm not going to tell you what's the best answer, but we'll have a discussion, and then these people can also share what do they do. So your insurance costs 
are going to be calculated, or how much you pay is going to depend on a lot of different things. First, they're going to look at your driving record. Are you a good driver? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? So you're a good driver. You're going to get a better deal on insurance than I would if I crash in almost every week. I run into something. <laughs> I'm a horrible driver. And I, I drive too fast, I'm always getting speeding tickets. If that's what I do, and I'm not very careful on the road, my insurance is going, the cost of my insurance is going to go really high. Something that they also base it on. So are you a good driver? Have you ever had to use your auto insurance? Or file a claim? If I've had to use, because I crash every single week, I run into trees, into curves, into buildings, and people, I have to file claims a lot, then my insurance cost is going to go up. They base it, it's called a clue report. So that's how many times have you had to use your insurance. They're also going to check on credit history. So am I good at borrowing? Do I pay back my debts? If I have a credit card, do I pay it off? Do I have a home, do I pay that off? So they're going to see if I'm a responsible person with my money. And then they're also going to see, have you ever had a time when you didn't have auto insurance? But you had a car? Mm -hmm. So if you have a car, you want to make sure you're always carrying coverage. Because if you have a car, and the insurance company goes to check and they say, there was a time he didn't have insurance coverage, that scares them. So they're going to increase your rate. So always make sure you're covering insurance that way. And ask you some other questions and then we'll get to yours. This is how they also base it off. So not only is it your credit report, your driving record, they have a very, very calculated mathematical formula and they, they ask questions. Are you a male? Are you married? Have you gone to college? Do you have a job? And they're going to say, based on all that information, we're going to say you're probably a low risk to us. You're a good driver, so we're going to charge you less. They want to know where you live. So auto insurance in Utah might be cheaper than auto insurance in Texas because there's not as many people. Auto insurance in Idaho might be cheaper than auto insurance in California because in California there's a lot more people and a lot more chance that you're going to get in an accident. And they're going to look at how do you use your car? Do you just drive your car to work and back every day? Or do you have to use your car and in your car all day long for your job? So the more you use your car, the higher your insurance is going to be. They're also going to base your insurance cost on if you're married or not. Married people have better insurance rates than most who are single. They are going to say, okay, how much coverage do you want? Like I told you before, if you wanted a deductible of $2,000, so that's how much you would cover if you had to use your insurance, then the cost of your insurance is going to be much lower on a monthly basis. And then, what kind of car do you drive? Do you just drive a car like a Honda or a Toyota? Or do you drive a big truck or a big SUV? Because if you're driving a big truck or SUV, it's going to cost you a lot more for insurance. If you drive a BMW or an Audi, that's going to cost a lot more than a Honda, Toyota, or a Ford. So you'll check into that and say, okay, all these factors determine how much I'm going to pay. These are all things finally to answer your question. What insurance coverage should I buy? Do you own your vehicle? So it's your vehicle, you have the title. Okay. If you own the vehicle and you have the title, by law, you only need liability coverage. So you might think, okay, that's cheaper, but if something were to happen to your car, do you have enough money saved that you could pay for it? You don't have to answer that question aloud if you don't want to. Think about that. If something happened to my car, could I go out and buy a new car? Could I pay cash to have it repaired? So you should be paying for you. It depends what coverage you have. So if you're thinking, I don't have $4,000 to fix my car, my suggestion would be to carry collision coverage and liability coverage. Because if you have collision coverage and liability coverage, if you were in an accident, 
whether it was your fault or not, the collision coverage would come in and pay to have your car fixed. If you have liability and collision coverage, it will cost you a little bit more each month, so your price will go up on your premium, but then if you needed to use it, you have access to it. Another thing to consider is you don't have a loan. If you ever have a loan on a car, then you have to have all the coverages. You have to have the liability, the comprehensive, that covers in rains and floods and thefts, and the collision. So you're thinking, well, what one do I need? A lot of times we'll base it on the value of our cars and do I have enough money to save to pay for the wreck if I get into an accident. If right now you don't have a lot of money saved or you're not able to save a lot of money, I would suggest carrying a liability and a collision just so you have that option to use it to replace your car if you can. Another thing to look at is do you have assets? Maybe you decide, I don't have a lot of cash that I could use to fix my car, but maybe I have another car I could sell. Or maybe I have another car that I could drive if my first car is in an accident. And if that's your situation, then it might be okay for you just to carry the minimum coverage with a liability. So it's a, it's a good question that you ask, and it's one that you've got to think about and decide. Because yeah. it's a question that has five different answers in this room. Yeah. Do you have enough coverage on your auto insurance? If you were in an accident and had to go to the hospital for three weeks, how would your family have money to survive and get food? So these are things to consider. Do I have enough coverage to replace any time I'm out of work? Do I have enough coverage on my car or my health insurance to cover my physical therapy or my treatments in the hospital? So those are all things that go into it as well. If you don't have a lot of money on hand, you might decide, I feel much better on an auto insurance if I pay for $300,000 in medical coverage. Because I know that will cover my whole hospital stay, and if I have to have a surgery or something like that, it will cover me there. So if you're thinking, I don't even know what's on my, my auto insurance, you can look, you can call them and say, hey, can you mail me copy of my coverage, or can you let me know what coverage I have so I know? And they're more than happy to do that. If you have access to your insurance online, on the computer, you can log in and you can check what kind of coverage you have right then. So those are all things to consider that way. These are some ways that you can save or get discounts. Um, if you wanted to save money on your insurance, but you still feel better about having a comprehensive and a collision package to cover your car if you wrecked it, you can change the deductible or change the amount that you, have, you would have to pay. So if your deductible is $1,000 instead of $500, your policy is going to be cheaper each month. Do you like to work on cars? Do you know very much about cars like how to fix them if you needed to? Yeah. So you could fix, you have more skills than I do. I don't even know how to change the oil in my car. So every three months I drive to the mechanic and I say, I need this today. And they say, okay, here's, it's gonna cost $60. You can do that yourself, so it probably costs 20 to $25. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I'll, maybe I'll come to your house and you can take my oil and I'll pay you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you can make extra money. And I'll be helping out a friend. So if you're driving a car, that you know how to fix, or that it's not too expensive to fix, that's going to lower the cost of your insurance. So if I have to drive a Mercedes, won't drive anything else, my car insurance is going to be a lot higher than it would be if I was happy driving a Ford or a Honda or something that's not as expensive to fix. So take that into consideration when you're deciding what car should I buy, how much is my insurance going to be. Um, depending on how you pay your premiums. So if you pay your premiums once a year, right up front, they'll lower the cost or they'll give you a discount sometimes. If you pay every single month, then they're having to go in and process that payment 12 times a month, or 12 times a year instead of once a year, then that's gonna be more expensive. Keep a good driving record. 
So three years ago, I drove too fast a lot of times, but I got caught twice. My auto insurance went up $20 a month because I was unsafe, I was a dangerous driver. But that has come off my record, so now it looks like I've always had a good driving record, so my insurance premium has gone down a little bit. So don't drive like Shauna, don't be crazy <laughs> on the road, and your insurance will be a better deal, okay? And then ask them if there's other discounts available. It's always okay to say, hey, you have other discounts, is there anything you can do to help save me money? So I always recommend, or I would say you never get what you don't ask for, so always ask if you have any other deals, is there anything else you can do to help me? Your auto insurance is bundled with your homeowner's or your renter's insurance, but you can pay it online by mail or in the phone, and then you can decide how much you want to pay or how you want to pay that the frequency of your payments. If you have enough money to pay it once a year, it's going to save you money. If you have to do it on a monthly basis, that's okay. Just know they'll probably charge a little bit more. My insurance is I pay every single month instead of once every six months. They charge me an extra $5 a month. But that's just something I have to decide. Do I have the money now or do I need to wait? So check that way. Always make sure that you keep your insurance card in your vehicle. So with your auto insurance, you have that little card in your vehicle. The card that looks like this or this. Do you have your auto insurance card in your vehicle? Okay. Make sure to check and see if it's in there. Because if you don't have that in there and you ever get pulled over, if you ever cause an accident, Yep, you get a ticket. You know, hopefully not from experience, but make sure you have your card with you. Um, really quickly, if you don't have insurance and you get pulled over on your vehicle, to get your car back or reinstated, they're going to charge you a minimum of $100. Plus, you're going to get a ticket for it, and you'll probably get a ticket for speeding or whatever else you were doing that made them pull you over in the first place. So lots of times people think I have money to pay my auto insurance, but they usually don't have money to pay those fees either, so it's better to keep your car insured. Um, these are just lots of insurance companies that are available. I can't tell you or refer you to one over the other, but just know that it's always a good idea to shop around. It's recommended that you check prices every two to three years. Because sometimes what companies will do is if you've been with them for three years, you think they like me because I'm a loyal customer. And they think this man's never going to leave us. We'll start charging more and more and more and more and more. He won't ever notice. So why some some company they charge money high? And then if you don't have the accident, you don't have the ticket, and then they charge money. So why do they charge you more? Yeah. It could be just because the cost of insurance has gone up, but it might just be that you've been with them for a while and they'll just start increasing the rates. So if your insurance has gone up, but you have never had a ticket, never had an accident, you can call and ask them, say, hey, why did my insurance go up? I have a driving record. Sometimes they'll lower the cost again for you. If they don't, then check prices at these other places. Sometimes it will just go up because the economy and things are more expensive to fix, but sometimes they'll just increase the price because um, you've been with them for so long. That actually happened to me. Health insurance, this is our last one. So your health insurance is going to cover you or your family if you are sick and have to go into the hospital or beds. Um, with this also, you have your premium, so your premium is your monthly cost, and then your deductible is how much you have to pay up front before your health insurance will come in and cover your whole bill. And there's something else that's tricky and really kind of mean on health insurance. Not only do you have your monthly cost of your premium, you have your deductible, which is how much you have to pay before they come in and cover you, but the out-of-pocket maximum is the most that you're required to pay in a year. So what happens is your premium for your health insurance might be $50 a month and your deductible might be $2,000. So you know if I go into the hospital or if my children have to go into the hospital, I'm going to have to pay that first $2,000 all by myself. 
My insurance will cover anything. But then your insurance has something called an out-of-pocket maximum, which is the most you're going to have to pay a year. And the out-of-pocket maximum is usually double your deductible. So your out-of-pocket maximum might be $4,000. How this is calculated, and it gets really confusing, so if you have questions, just say, Sean, I don't get it, and I'll try and explain it better. Out-of-pocket maximum is calculated based on percentage. So you know I've got to pay $2,000 to use my health insurance every single year. My out-of-pocket maximum is $4,000. Once I hit my deductible of $2,000, then my insurance will come in and cover 80% of my bill up until $4,000. And once you've paid a full $4,000 out-of-pocket, then your insurance will cover you in full at 100%. So many times we forget, we just think, oh, my deductible is only this, and then we need our deductible, and bills keep coming in, keep coming in, and we think, why do we still have to pay? It's because we haven't met our out-of-pocket maximum yet. So be sure on your health insurance to understand what's my deductible and what's my out-of-pocket maximum. Do you have health insurance available to your work? Yes, I have. So I have, but then sometimes I'm going to ask you. Then some that you may pay, then the other one is in the other way. Yes. Yeah. And that is because of the deductible and the out of pocket maximum. So, on your health insurance, do you know what your deductible is? Yeah. You'll want to find out what that is because that's why they only pay it a part at first and then you're required to pay the other part. Yeah. So, call and I say, I need to know what's my deductible. And then also ask them, what's my out-of-pocket maximum? So there's those two amounts that you have to pay. So out-of-pocket and deductible, and that's why they don't cover your bill in full. They only cover a portion of it or a part of it. Is that confusing? I think health insurance is confusing. I worked in health insurance for yeah. years, and it's confusing. It's very confusing. Um, some employers, you mentioned I have health insurance available to my work, so some employers will offer health insurance and you think, is it worth the extra cost? Well now, it's a law that we have health insurance. If we don't have health insurance, we have fines on our taxes. Most families who face a huge medical emergency, cancer, a stroke, an accident or trauma, they don't have that much money to cover the cost. So while you're paying your premium every month, you might think, I'm healthy, why am I doing this? It's because of the what if. So if you have a major medical emergency and you have to go to the hospital or someone in your family does, that insurance is going to come in and make it much more affordable so that you're covered and you don't have that stress of wondering how am I going to pay for all of these bills. That's why health insurance is so important. Um, there's a lot of places, and this doesn't always pertain to you right now, to have health insurance to your employer. But if you're ever working and you don't have health insurance to your employer, you can call and get insurance directly with an insurance company, kind of like you would with um, auto insurance or renter's insurance. Make sure the agent is licensed. Um, healthcare.gov is the website that's administered by the United States or the federal government, where you can go in and check insurance. This site and prices, they only have, they call it open enrollment time. So you can only sign up for specific times during the year. Right now you have health insurance, it's not a problem. If you were able, if you ever had a, a birth or a life change, so a birth, an adoption, a marriage or divorce, that's when you can add people or take people off of your insurance. What happens if you lose your job? You lose your life insurance, you, you're going to lose your health insurance. Yeah. But you're really worried. Maybe you lose your job and you have cancer or you have kidney disease. And you think, I really need my insurance. What am I going to do? Federal law allows you to continue paying for your health insurance by yourself. It's called COBRA coverage. So COBRA is an abbreviation and it stands for the Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act. That's a big word, you don't need to remember it. But COBRA coverage is what allows you to continue paying your monthly premiums on your home. So if you ever lost your job and you had health insurance, 
through your job, your boss will come to you and say, sorry, you were being let go, or we no longer need you, or you're fired. Always say, I need my COBRA packet, or I need the information on COBRA coverage for my insurance so I can pay for it by myself until I get another job. So that's how you can continue your health insurance if it's through your work, but you lose your job, okay? Where you have your job and things are going well, you're a very hard worker, that's usually not as important. That's something to tuck in your head in case there's an emergency or something like that, okay? And that is the end of the presentation. Do you have any other specific questions? No. Okay. Please. No questions right now. Yeah. If you do, feel free. I have a business card I can give you. You can give us, uh, like, write an email or call us. If you have questions about your um, any type of insurance, every time in my experience, I always call my insurance company and say, what about this or what about this? I always call and I ask questions. I love to learn and I always want to know. So usually your insurance agent, whoever you bought it from or the insurance company, will have phone numbers and they should be available to answer any questions and help take care of you. Okay. And then make sure you can take this home yeah. and start doing your home inventory. Do you have a video camera or like a cell phone? Yeah, I have Cell phone? So what a lot of people like to do now, because is it fun to write on all of these pages? I don't think it is. That's boring. What you can do is you can take your cell phone with a video and just walk through your house and film or take pictures of everything you have and then save a copy of that video with this sheet, or save a copy of that video at a friend's house. In case you ever needed it, you could give that video to your insurance company and say, this is proof of all of my things I had. So you can take video, pictures, or fill this out. Either way works. To learn more or to find a class, visit slcolibrary.org slash smartinvesting.